This is the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we inspire professional cooks to take on greater risk to build a personal chef business for themselves. Now, here's your host, Andres Hinojosa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Chefpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Andres Hinojosa. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today again. Again, we cannot do this podcast without you. We love the support that we get from the community and also just from all of you that are listening to this podcast. We hope it brings you value and it blesses your life and your business. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this episode and we're going to do a little something different today. Uh, me and Brock were thinking about, um, first of all, how are you, Brock? Oh, thank you for asking. I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Chef? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So what I just we're thought I was do, sitting here. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah right, 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 right. So we actually are going to do something different today. We want to start to test a segment that we want to call Stump Chef Andres. All right. And so what we're going to do is uh, Brock has scoured our Facebook group. And by the way, if you are not a member of our free Facebook group. It's called the Shepherdner Movement Group. And uh, you can go ahead and find it in Facebook and just basically ask you a few questions. And then our uh, social media assistant will let you in. And you could join the conversation with other like-minded chefs from all over the world who are looking to start, grow, and run a personal chef business. And so what he did was he pulled three questions from that group. Now in the future, if you guys want to have a question that you want to try to stump Chef Andres on in the future, go ahead and send that question to info at chefpreneur.com um, and just kind of title it podcast question or stump Chef Andres question. We want to hear from you or you can even put it in the group as well. And so we want to scour these things. And um, so today I'm going to kind of let Brock ask me these questions and then I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability and just see and uh, if I can help all of you in your business. And these are real questions, by the way. These are not just made up questions. These are real questions from people that are wanting to know these answers uh, in their business. And so I, I just hope that me answering these questions as well helps more than just the person asking them, right? Um, and so, but he, I think, was trying to throw me a couple curveballs and make them difficult questions. So I can't wait to get started. So Brock, without further ado, take it away. Give me the questions that I have to answer today right, and try right, to stump right. me. You, I will. Let me get my sheet of paper here. Just oh kidding. Boy, here we go. Just kidding. I typed them up. Uh, okay. So the rules of this game here, okay, oh is boy. There's, there's rules there's, to this there's, game. There's a few there's things you can do. This game. Okay. If you need help with the answer, chef, you can phone a chef. Okay. I can step outside the room and close the door and shout the answer to you. phone a chef. <laughs> you break. Kidding. All right. So uh, this, this first question. Of course, yes, I scoured, 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 scoured. the entrepreneur movement. Um, looked through everything. I'm hungry now because I looked at all the food picks, but found a few great questions for you. Awesome. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if awesome. I can stump you here. All right. So all right. question number one and go. How are you handling gift certificates this holiday season? It is the holiday season after all. Should you charge up front? Are you going to make sure that it covers the food? Do you leave it open so that the giver can pay you later for, for food later? How are you handling all gift certificates for the holidays? That is a great question. Whoever answered that question or asked that question, that's a great question. So one of the things that I have taught many of my students, and actually I get asked this question quite a lot. In fact, with one of our protege students, we actually created a gift certificate uh, for them. Uh, due to their partnership with Keller Williams Realty and basically uh, wanting to give away gift certificates. Because uh, it's funny, you know, I'm going to use these questions to kind of make it a training point. That's that's my style. And so if you're, you know, I teach strategic partnerships. So they partner with Keller Williams, which is a realty company, to give their services away when someone closes on their house, right? Because what better gift than to give the gift of personal chef service, especially when you're buying a new house and you're super excited and you want to show everybody in your neighborhood your new house guess what? That's good for you as a chef, because then if the realtor that sold them the house gives them uh, this gift certificate, then guess what? You have exposure to them and all their little rich friend neighbors that are going to come over and check the house. So that's just a little side note. I want to give you guys as much value as I can. And when it comes to gift certificates, the reason why I say, okay, this is what I do and what I teach is you want to just give it away for a certain amount. Very simple very uncomplicated. Just like a gift card to, you know, Amazon or whatever that's for 50 bucks. It's like, 
it's $50 to use towards Amazon. The reason I do this, I've tried every which way on gift cards. I've tried people, uh, I've tried doing them where it's like a dinner for two, a dinner for five, a dinner for six. The only thing I don't like about that is it limits then the potential uh, customer or client to use them because they feel like, well, I have to have, it's just two of us. What if I want to invite my parents over and there's four of us, right? And then they start to become, it starts to become complicated. And like I teach, if you confuse your client, you'll, you'll lose your client. So, what I recommend for whoever asked this question, this is what I recommend. Give them just a, a, a nice amount. So whether it be if someone wants to buy the gift certificate for $500, then allow them to apply it towards your different services. For instance, in my business, we have a family style option. We have more of a, a, of a kind of elevated four course option that's plated and, and kind of customized menu. So both of them have different price points. This allows your client to use the $500 towards maybe inviting more people over and kind of get more of a casual family style approach um, and using $500, you know, and that should include groceries as well, right? Because it's $500 credit. So for instance, let's say, you know, uh, a, a, a client receives a, you know, somebody buys a gift certificate for a loved one for $1,000. They give it as a gift. The person who has a thousand dollar gift certificate wants to use it for eight people and uh, eight people times your services of, you know, a hundred bucks a person that's $800. And then they're estimating the groceries at three fifty. Well, they're going to be able to use, you know, their, their gift certificate, uh, but they're going to have to pay 150 bucks out of pocket, right? So a thousand dollars is going to cover a thousand dollars of it. And then an extra $150 for the groceries or whatever would come out to be. So I personally teach just have it be for a straight amount and it could be put towards groceries or anything else. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with that, the second best thing to do is to then just say that this gift certificate only goes towards the services. So you could do it one of two ways. You could say it includes the grocery cost. It doesn't matter because really that money is going to come out, but you're getting that money up front by getting the gift certificate. So if you do put it towards just the services alone, basically that's all it is too. So if they get a, a gift certificate for a thousand dollars, they cannot use that towards groceries. It's only used towards services and then groceries will always be on top of it. So there's one of two ways that you can do it. I recommend just making it easier for a client. The, the number one thing about gift certificates is somebody else paid you to get another client. Okay. So you have to look at it that way. It's not like, you know, it's not just another service. You now have a potential future client that's going to book you over and over from someone actually gifting them uh, services from you. So it's pretty amazing. So that's my answer to the question, Brock. Mm, that's not bad. Yeah. That's, thank you. That's good. Appreciate that's not it. bad. You, it, it almost kind of sounds, sounds like, like I, you know yeah, what you're doing yeah, a little kind bit. Of, so you know, a little good, bit. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Well, I hope that that helps uh, somebody out there, you know, who's who also has had that question, especially around the holiday season right now. You know, those things are really big and it really doesn't matter. I mean, we got holidays all throughout the year. People have birthdays, anniversaries, and of course, you guys are always looking for ways to go above and beyond and to serve your clients. So I truly hope that that has helped somebody. Um, all right, man. Well, so I had this I had this next question, but I was looking at it going, eh, you know, if we're really in it to maybe stump you or really kind of challenge things, it, it, it really, it was kind of a gimme. So I went back out, I was kind of looking as you were, as you were talking there. Uh, I was trying to look for something. And this this one comes up quite a bit in the group, I had noticed. And it has to do with contracts. Ooh, a lot of people ask contracts. about contracts. And so um, there's different services that people are providing, right? And so one of them, you know, is meal prep. All okay. right. That yep. seems to be a, a major question or or something that comes up that has to do with contracts more so than what other things I'm seeing here. So how would you approach that, chef? If if they're doing a meal prep for mm -hmm. a client, and that's one of their services. How would you approach doing a contract with the client? Okay, so a contract for services. I'm assuming a contract for services. They want you know maybe weekly uh, meal planning, and um, and the chef is looking to provide information within the contract around payment, advance payment cutoff dates, okay. you know, okay. things like that. How would you go about handling that? That's great. So basically what I teach is, again, going back to my previous answer, the less confusing it is for a client, the better it is for everybody. So clarity is key, but simplicity is also key. So you do not want to make things complicated. Now think of it this way. 
If you're buying a $500,000 home, speaking of realtors from Keller Williams that we talked about in the last question, you probably need something a little bit more lengthy of a contract with somebody signing it and kind of all parties signing it, right? It's a big, it's a big, it's a big agreement. It's a big deal. When it comes to personal chef services, I mean, really, you're talking about meal prepping maybe once a week for them. I would not, I, I do not teach at all to go into contract, written contract with any of your clients. And I'll tell you the reason why. Number one, again, simplicity is key. You want to steer, uh, clearly state what your deposit policies are, what your cancellation policies are, um, and, and you know certain things that, about your policies that we teach in our program. And a lot of times I like these to attach these on an invoice, and I'll tell you why. The invoice is kind of like if you if it's right on the invoice and the client pays a deposit or pays the invoice, it's kind of like they're agreeing to what you're saying with their money. Okay. Now I've talked to a couple of attorneys about this and it's like, hey, you paid it, right? You paid it and it's kind of like a signature. Uh, you don't hand over money. And if it's clearly there stated on the invoice, it's clearly stating what your policies are and they're basically agreeing to them by paying it. Now, let's be real. If you're going to have someone sign a contract for a service that potentially cost them four or five, six hundred bucks a week, that's not that's not very that's not a very big deal in the scope of financial uh, uh, kind of uh, financial commitment. Right. First of all, if somebody was going to say, hey, you didn't do what you said in your contract, I'm going to sue you. Nobody would sue you over five, six hundred bucks. It'd be stupid. They'd lose money just on the attorney fees alone. Right. So what I always teach is I don't do contracts for any really services. Now, if you're talking possibly about a wedding, um, you know, not necessarily as a personal chef, but even as a caterer, that's like 300 people, it's $100,000, maybe sign a contract. Um, And because, again, we're talking about the scope of the actual services provided is a lot of money. And those are some big, big, big type of negotiational contracts. And so, of course, those are a little bit more wise to actually have a contract with. But on day-to-day business operations and a personal chef, I don't teach on having contracts. I teach on having policies that are very well written, very clear, and stated on your invoice. And I'll tell you the reason why it's stated on the invoice. Because if you send them separately, you don't know. Did they get the email? Did they not? On the invoice, since it states it very clearly, once they pay that invoice, it's kind of up to them if they didn't read the invoice they were paying, right? Because an attorney or a judge would be like, hey, why did you pay this invoice? Like it says it clearly on here. Why would you pay something? Do you just not read anything before you buy something? Um, that's the thing. It'd be, it'd be like saying, going to the grocery store, picking up uh, some sort of a sauce or canned item and, 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 and paying it and being like, oh, I didn't know this was in there. I, you guys don't tell me that there's high fructose corn syrup in it. And then the company's like, Actually, we do. It's in the ingredients on the back of the label. You just didn't decide not to read them before you bought them. So you have to understand that you want to make it easy. And I always tell my students, you want to be more gracious with your clients than 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 others. Um, and the reason is, it's just good business practice, in my opinion. And, and I like to have a lot of integrity in my business that I that I conduct. And I don't want my clients to feel like I'm being nickel and diming them and being very petty. But my services and my policies are very clear. So if I say, hey, I if you cancel within 14 days, I keep the deposit, right? Very clear, very clear. But however, if someone's like, well, we have to cancel our, our event because of COVID, uh, one of my family members has COVID, um, of course, we all know that that's, we're not going to meet now and you're canceling the event. Um, unfortunately, our policies are we're going to keep your deposit. However, lately, especially with the pandemic, what I've been doing is I've been saying, well, that credit, we can we could just keep that as credit on file. So we're not going to refund you back. However, when you do do another service with us, you're going to have credit with us, 100% credit, even including the cancel fee, which is built in that. And so I've been very gracious with our clients. And again, why wouldn't we want them to book again with us? And, and holding a little bit of their finances for us actually benefits. It kind of keeps them saying, hey, you have store credit here, right? Just like if you had store credit at, you know, at, at Walmart, you had $100 store credit, you're probably going to go to Walmart and spend at least a hundred bucks because you have the credit there, right? So uh, you want to make sure you're doing that. So again, recap, I don't 
sign contracts for normal everyday personal chef services. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's complicated and it kind of scares people. It's like, man, you're going to come in and cook for me and my family of four. And you want me to sign this two page document. It's like, I felt like I signed less papers, you know, getting the loan on my house. So you don't want to scare them off either. And you want it to be, but you need to have, have it be very, very clear your policies and your, uh, your service agreement. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you really over-delivered on that one. Well, I want to, again, I'm trying to flip it in as a good training. Mode. No, that's great. That's great. Um, and, and you know, I'm noticing, I'm noticing a little bit of a trend or a pattern here with… Simplicity. Simplicity. <laughs> keeping it simple for your clients uh, and keep keeping it simple, simple for your clients. Stupid. The old kiss keeps, effect. Yeah, keeps it simple for you. And that's what we're all trying to do here, right? Just keep business simple. Shouldn't be stressful. Shouldn't be frustrating. Correct. Um, so, man, drop some… Drop some Real nugget bombs on that one. Well, thank you. All thank right. You. Hope it, it actually it actually you mentioned something and that that brings me to my third and final question, Ooh. which is a doozy. Okay. And I'm looking forward right. to asking it actually because it's like it's a big thing and it hadn't been a big thing before. Okay. All right. Am I giving you any hints? Yeah. The uh, wheels I think turning, so. I think guessing. it's going to go down a road here. Now we talk about contracts and uh, there's another word that starts with C. Oh boy. That reared its ugly head last yeah, year boy. and is still kind of affecting things. So Okay. Give it to me straight Here's the here. question for you. Regarding vaccinations, how are you handling that with clients to make sure that they feel secure when and if they're asking if any chef that's going to come cook in their home is vaccinated or unvaccinated. What are your thoughts and how are you kind of handling that? I think this is a big one for a lot of people out there potentially. It is. And it's kind of, it's a, it's a little, it's controversial, right? And so if you need to uh, phone in Chef Fauci or anything, uh, sorry, I don't got his number. No, no, no. This is a good question. And um, I'm glad you actually asked. I think this is going to be something that's going to help a lot of people in realizing um, what I, you know, this is now these are, I'm going to keep it also very strictly down to what I believe the right thing to do in your business. So number one, I'm going to start with this. Number one, every single one of you with a personal chef business, obviously, has the safety and welfare of themselves as well as their clients in mind. Okay, that's just straightforward. Um, obviously, again, same reason, and I'm going to use a couple of examples, and I'm going to hopefully open up the dialogue in your mind and, and, and have you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, because this is this is a multifaceted question. This is not just a one angled question. Um, because there's several things here. Now, depending on, we'll start here, depending on if a chef is a true chefpreneur, but also a solopreneur, where they're the only ones that cook for their clients, um, then it's pretty straightforward. If you've been vaccinated and the client asks, you have been vaccinated. And that's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, if you are not va vaccinated, which again is completely your right, I uh, also would recommend that if, of course, a client asks if you are vaccinated, that you can state, no, I am not. Now, we have actually had this in our business a few times. We uh, Now, my business is a little different, and I'll get into that here in a little bit. But if if it's just you, it's pretty straightforward, right? You're either not or you are, right? And what we found is some clients will still be open if you are not vaccinated. They're still a lot of clients that will be open. Um, I've seen everything from them just asking you to maybe take a, a COVID test before you arrive, you know, within 24 hours or 48 hours of the service um, and, you know, to wear a masks, you know, and gloves and whatever else, right? So uh, there is quite a bit of different ways to help protect you and others from any kind of virus that's going around. Now, this is the other thing too that you have to understand. Um, I, I want to bring it on both levels here. Because it's, it's again, like I said, it's not just cookie cutter, here's the answer and that's it. The same reason why we all wash our cutting board after we cut raw chicken before we're going to cut, uh, you know, vegetables. And, and preferably you'd have two different cutting boards, right? One from kind of proteins, one for vegetables. But if that's not the case, of course, you're not going to want to cross contaminate. You're going to want to wash the cutting board after you've cut raw chicken before you cut anything else on it. However, 
anytime that you do anything in life, whether you get in your car, you get on your motorcycle to go to work, you get on an airplane, you cut an onion. There is a level of risk involved that you're going to either cut your finger, you're going to get in an accident, or you wash your cutting board and there's one little piece of chicken that you didn't notice and it gets on, you know, a piece of cucumber and someone gets a belly ache and goes, you know, number two unpleasantly for a while. Okay. So all that being said, you have to look at it from both angles. Nothing in this world is completely protected 100%. That's just the truth, no matter how you want to look at it. And I'm not talking about if you're vaccinated, are you going to get, are you, going to get you know, the virus? I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just in general terms. Someone wanting you to serve them in their home has to understand there is a level of risk involved with any of that. I mean, that's, just, that's even before... Uh, the virus was going around. This it could be anything. It could be you know a simple uh, common cold that you pass on, right? So you have to be also looking at it from both angles. Again, it's not one sided. Now, like I said, if you are a solopreneur, it's just you and your business. It's very cut and dry, very easy, and you can lay to rest some of their. Uh, I guess you would say I don't want to say fears, but just some of their you know inhibitions of you coming over. If you're not vaccinated and they want you vaccinated. Maybe you're not the best service, you know, provided for them, for them, and that's okay. Um, or they might be suffice, like I said, with a COVID test or a test of some sort, and you know, mask, gloves, and so forth and so on. Now, in my business, because I work with uh, and we have several chefs that do events for us, quite a bit of chefs that do events for us. Um, we also want to respect the opinions and rights and decisions of our chefs as well, and we want to be upfront with that with our clients as well, and so. Um, it, it, it hasn't come up to be honest too much, but I think it's probably come up four or five times in the last, you know, year yeah. and or so. And, and, and you're doing, and I'm doing a lot of events. I mean, we're, we're doing over sometimes 30, 30 events a month, yeah. pretty consistently, right? 30 to 45 events a month. And so, uh, it's actually going to come up maybe four or five times at most. Um, and, and none of them have been really like aggressive with it. Um, sometimes they just ask up front or they'll even let us know on our, on our sales call, which I teach in my program the flow of it right on our personal chef consultation call. They'll even mention it up front. You know, now we do not ask the client if they prefer a vaccinated chef, because to be honest with you, that is their business as well. We, we, we don't want to impart something where we feel like they have to give us an answer on that um, because it might lead into, well, we're not vaccinated or we are vaccinated. And we also don't want to feel like we're discriminatory towards our clients either. If a client requests that the chef be vaccinated, then with whatever chef, even though it's not law, but though we, with all of our chefs, we respect their privacy, we literally will say, hey, this client wants a chef that's vaccinated. If you do not want to disclose if you are vaccinated or not, that is completely up to you. And we respect that. Most of the chefs that we've obviously worked with, they just tell me flat out, chef, I am vaccinated or chef, I am not, right? Very straightforward. And so we just keep a record of that so we know. Uh, what chef we're sending to what event and, and, and basically what chefs could be available that are vaccinated for a client who wants someone who's vaccinated. So if you have a team and you're expanding, I suggest that you just, you have to respect the safe. Of course, your safety is your number one thing, but you also have to respect everyone's privacy and, and, and right of choice to feel like they're doing best for their health and their body. And, and that's just something I really believe in. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very neutral in that. So that's what I really feel is I feel strongly about the right of decision and the right of choice. Uh, but also I, I am wanting to make sure that we are being as safe as humanly possible. Again, same reason I wash my hands when I work with raw chicken, wash the cutting board, uh, same reasons why I wash my hands after I use the restroom, right? I, I don't want to make anybody sick. We also also want to practice as as much safety uh, procedures as possible, and be as professional and responsible as we possibly can. So it is a multifaceted question. Now, one of the things that we went back to on simplicity is that's that's really even in this thing in any context in your business, you want to keep it again clear but simple, very clear but simple. Um, and sometimes you will, we did have one, I'll give you one quick, you know, we're coming up about 25 minutes on this podcast, but I want to give you one brief story of what actually happened in our business. Um, someone did book us. They, they did not relay to us that they were looking to have someone who was vaccinated. They did not relay that information. 
they automatically assumed that everyone on my team was vaccinated. And uh, unfortunately, that was not the case with one of the team members that went to their home. Now, my team members were wearing masks. They were being very appropriately professional. But when the server showed up that was unvaccinated, they, they told her that she could not serve them because they needed someone that was vaccinated. The client then got back to us and was like, you know, kind of not necessarily upset, but just kind of like, oh, you know, like I thought everybody would have been vaccinated. You're coming to somebody's home, you know, safety measures. However, again, like I said, on her end, with all due respect to our client, because we love our clients, but just like I'm teaching you, never assume. Clarity is the opposite of assumption. When you assume things, you really don't have an answer. You're just assuming that that's the case. Clarity is the actual definition of clarity is you're being clear and you understand in full what's going on. So on her end, she should have not assumed. Just like on our end, we should not assume every client wants a vaccinated chef. That would be very, very, uh, no offense, unwise of us. So, um, but however, you know, unfortunately, like I said, the server was not able to be involved in the event. I still paid the server out. The chef did a fantastic job. Uh, they were still able to get the food out and, and get everything. And the service was great. She loved the service. She wants to book us again. But now we know that she wants vaccinated team or vaccinated staff members coming to her home in the future. Okay. So, and we respect that a hundred percent. So I just want to let you guys know that, again, this is a multifaceted question. Um, and to be honest with you, again, I think it's a perfect balance of understanding that you want to make sure you put the safety of your team, yourself, and the clients all on the same level, but at the same time, make sure that you're protecting and keeping things private and also respecting other people's opinions because that's equally as important as well. So I want to make sure I kind of just put that out there and I hope that answers the question regarding the vaccination status and so forth and so on in the personal chef industry. Nailed it. Awesome. I think. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> you tell but, us, you know. guys. You tell us. Leave a comment. Hey, guys, if you want uh, to get any of your questions answered, make sure that you comment You know, down below if you're, you're seeing this on YouTube. Uh, email us at podcast at chefpreneur.com. That's podcast at chefpreneur.com. We'll get some of your most pressing questions answered. Let's see if you guys can maybe stump the old chefy here. Mm. Give them, give them some hard ones, guys. Like you guys, you, you know, you're posting things in the, in the movement group. It's wonderful. It's great, but get some of these things answered by the man himself and really get that. Yes. Yeah, what do you call questions. it? Cl clear. Huh? What was it? Claire, Claire, cl clarity. Was that what you called it? Uh, clarity, Is that the word? clarity, clarity, yeah. clarity, 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 clarity. Yes. Clarity. <laughs> yeah. Clarity. Get your clarity guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, answer, ask those questions, ask us any question that you have. So, yeah, I want to hear it. And so again, speaking of simplicity and clarity, listen, if you're really looking to start a personal chef business, grow one from someone who's done it. And also someone who's helped hundreds of people do it as well. We are having our third annual Chefpreneur Mastermind Retreat in Orlando, January 28th through February 1st, where you'll be learning the fundamentals that are needed to grow your personal chef business so you can create a blueprint to follow after you leave the retreat. What do I mean by a blueprint? It's clarity. It's a roadmap. It's a framework. And it's where you can go step-by-step step in building your business. And we know the steps you need to take. And we've dialed it down to a very simple process that you follow and get Results. So if you're interested in attending the Shepherd Mastermind Retreat in Orlando, Florida on January 28th through February 1st, 2022, listen, this is our last retreat we're doing for a while. We don't know when we're going to do the next one, and it will be triple the investment when we do do it. Text the word retreat to 619 304 6496. That's text the word retreat to 619 304 6496. Hey, if you have not subscribed to us on our YouTube channel, head over to YouTube, search Chefpreneur. You'll see my beautiful face, face pop up. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for that notification. So when we have a new podcast or a new video come out, you're notified and you can get jump right into the content. And again, guys, if you if you guys have not joined the Facebook group yet, head over to Facebook. The Chefpreneur Movement Group is the go-to resources where Chef. Chefs and cooks can learn about planning, building, starting, and running their own personal chef business. Again, 
The group is designed to connect you with other like-minded chefs and cooks who want to take the next step in their careers and really put their future into their own hands. Hey, we love you so much. Again, we're here to motivate, educate, and inspire you guys all to take a stand for your personal freedom, break the chains of that kitchen job that's been holding you down forever or whatever job you're in holding you down to build your own personal chef business. Again, the future is yours and we know you can put it into your own hands. Hey, God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next podcast episode. We love you. Take care. God bless. We'll talk soon. Thank you for listening to the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we want to educate, motivate, and inspire as many chefs to become their own boss. Please subscribe to the podcast and join us every week to be part of the movement. To sign up for our free online web class, visit thechefpreneurwebinar.com.